What we're going to explore this time is science and engineering practice number two, developing and using models. Students engaged in this scientific practice use and construct models as helpful tools for representing ideas and explanations. These tools include diagrams, drawings, recreations, computer simulations, and more. Go ahead and open up this note sheet on Google Classroom. There are five different types of models. Models can be drawings, a picture with labels and details. Models can be replicas, a small scale example of a real item. They can be simulations, which are imitations of a situation or process. They can be diagrams, drawings showing the appearance, structure, or workings or, of something. And finally, they can be analogies, which are sort of like comparisons, where you're comparing one item to another. Now go ahead and pause this video and fill out the notes on your note sheet. You might have to rewind, but what you want to do is you want to label each type of model that you could possibly create on your worksheet. Just click in the box and add the text where it matches. I like to think of the process of modeling like a circle. We start by developing a model. Then we evaluate what we've developed. Sometimes we learn new information. And then we revise what we already have. The point is, modeling is always improving. Go ahead and pause this video again and add the three labels to the circle on the bottom of your worksheet for the three phases of modeling. Now we're going to go ahead and create a model. We're going to create a model of a game that I like to affectionately call the polar bear game. It's a game played with dice. Here's how the game works. If I roll a set of dice, I can look at the dice and tell you something about polar bears and something about fish. In this case, the dice you see here represent 10 polar bears and 8 fish. So the question is, how did I know that? How did I read these dice to have them represent polar bears and fish? That's what we're going to try to model. What's the secret behind all of these dice? You have a couple options of tools that you can use for creating the model of this game. One option is to use a dry erase board, if you happen to have one. Option number two resides right on your Chromebook and it's Google Jamboard. To get there, just click New, then click more and then scroll down a bit and you'll see a series of apps. You're looking for the one titled Google Jamboard. Click it and open up the app. Google Jamboard is like a digital wipe erase board and it's really perfect for what we're doing. To draw these squares, you simply click the shape tool and you can drag and drop each square. If you click the three dots, you can duplicate the squares. What I'm doing here is I'm laying out five squares to represent dice because, because we're going to be modeling the dice and how they represent polar bears and fish. And then I'm using the circle tool and I'm using the fill bucket to fill it with a little bit of color. Then the duplicate option and I'm making a series of dice. Now you don't have to do it this way, but the just, just, this is just one way that we can model what it is we're going to be doing today with the polar bear modeling experiment. So what you do need to draw on either your wipe erase board or on your jam board is five squares to represent dice. You can pause this video to set that up. You don't have to put the dots on them yet. That will come later. Once you have the five squares to represent your dice, then you're going to be labeling. So on jam board, you can click the pen tool, draw an arrow, then click the text box tool and you can actually type some text. If you're using a wipe erase board, you can draw these things on your wipe erase board. So get yourself all set up and then we're going to start the polar bear phenomenon modeling task. So your task in this assignment is to take a look at every single step of the way in the polar bear dice phenomenon. And you're trying to model what's going on. You're going to model that on your wipe erase board or on your jam board. And you're really trying to figure out what the dice represent when it comes to polar bear 
and what the dice represent when it comes to fish. In other words, somewhere on the die, there are polar bear, and somewhere on the die, there are fish. So in this example, I rolled five dice. How many polar bears are in these five dice? Well, I'm gonna tell you the answer. There are six, but what you have to figure out is how I knew that. There are also fish waiting beneath the ice. How many fish are there? Well, I'm gonna tell you that too. There are six. So what do you think? What's your first guess? How does each die represent a polar bear? And how does each die represent a fish? Go ahead and give it a try on your wipe erase board or your Google Jam board. Draw the five die, draw an arrow, and tell me what you think. Where are the fish in these die? And where are the polar bear in these die? Now, if you're stuck, this is a good first draft of what a model might look like. I've drawn all five dice on my jam board. I've drawn arrows and I have guesses as to which I think are polar bears on these dice and which are fish. Keep in mind, it's okay if you don't know yet. When we talk about modeling, a lot of the time our first guess is kind of that. We develop a model, but we don't necessarily know the answer yet. So you have your first guess, which is great. Now here's your second guess. Pretend I rolled all five dice again. And this time at the very top, you got a new clue. It says polar bears sit around holes. So somehow these five dice represent a hole in some way. And in this case, I rolled all threes. And in all of these threes, there are 10 polar bear. So somehow these dice represent 10 polar bear. And somehow these dice represent 20 fish. So what's your guess? How do you think these dice represent polar bear? And how do you think these dice represent fish? If you think your model's good, you can leave it. But if you have a new guess based on this new information, go ahead and revise your model. Make a change. See if it fits. You're gonna see another dice roll in just a minute. Scientists often get new information and have to revise their models. And here we go in our polar bear dice phenomenon. We just got new information. I rolled the dice again and I have five new numbers. And up at the top, I have a new piece of information. It says, polar bears sit around holes, you know, fishing for fish in the water below. This is new information. And when I look at these die, this time we are told there are no polar bears showing up in all these dice. And there are no fish showing up in all these dice. Somehow, Polar bear are represented by dice and fish are represented by dice, but they disappeared. You might have to revise your model. If you were guessing that a certain dot represented polar bear or that a certain dice number represented polar bear and this doesn't fit with your guess, try a new guess. Revise your model to see if we can get it to fit with the new information you received. And if you're struggling, it's okay. Scientists struggle too with new information. Okay, this might be hard, I know, but we've got a new roll of the dice. We have six dice this time, so you need to add one to your group of dice, and we have more information. These red arrows are showing us that the only die that might possibly have a polar bear in them are the ones with these red arrows. So what is it about the dice with those red arrows? What's different about them than the other dice? And another hint is given. There are six polar bears shown in this example and 12 fish. If you have a new guess, revise your model. And don't worry if you feel frustrated because that's how science works sometimes. 
You're not going to know the answer yet, and that's okay. This time I'm going to reveal a big piece of information, and that is that both sides of the dice matter. The top of the die represents something, polar bears or fish, and the bottom of the die represents something too, polar bears or fish. In our example, we have six polar bears and 12 fish. And the red arrows show us that the only dice that can possibly have polar bears are the ones on the top that have dots in the center. We're getting ready to reveal the solution, but revise your model. See if you can have your model represent the polar bear and have your model represent the fish. Okay, so here comes a very, very big clue. The polar bears sit around holes. And in this die, we can see I have modeled how polar bears are represented by each die. The dots on the outside that have a circle in the center are the only dice that have polar bears. So we go, if we go back to this example, the dice with the three on it has two polar bears. The dice with the five on it has four. Two plus four is six. Go ahead and revise your model because you have new information. And here comes even more information. The fish are hiding beneath each die. Think of it this way. The hole is a hole in the ice. And the polar bear is reaching down into the hole in the ice to catch some fish. And the fish are at the bottom. Did you know that if the top of the die has a three on it, it has a four on the bottom? So in this case, we have two polar bears on the top represented by the die, which has the three on it, and we have four fish underneath. Once again, revise your model. Add arrows to represent the fish. Add arrows to represent the polar bear. Redraw the bottom of the die if you need to, to represent the bottom of the die. Our models should continue to develop as we obtain new information. By now, maybe you know the secret to the polar bear and the fish on these die. If not, hopefully you understand that modeling is developing an understanding, evaluating that understanding when you get new information, and revising the model to reflect that new information. It's a circular process. Go ahead and complete the Google form on Google Classroom to demonstrate your understanding of modeling.